Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. This video, I'm going to show you Azure Synapse Analytics Serverless Apache Spark with Python. So this is the PySpark API for working with Apache Spark. We'll take a look at um, just one piece of Azure Synapse. Azure Synapse Analytics is really this integrated analytics platform within uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud. We're just going to focus on Apache Spark, walk through a demo of what a real but fairly straightforward Apache Spark job looks like, and a few of the pieces you would need to set up in order to do the same demo on your own. First, we will need to jump into our Synapse workspace and um, go to Synapse Studio by clicking the open link. Once you click on that, you'll end up on the home page of your Synapse Studio. And first thing we need to do is make sure we have some data to access. I'm going to be using uh, data that you can get access to by going to your data pane, clicking on linked. And then if you don't already have a sample data set called uh, NYC yellow, you can click, click the plus sign, go to browse gallery. And there's a lot of data available here. Feel free to, you know, explore your own data with similar types of commands to what I'll do. But if you want to follow along exactly, click on New York City yellow, continue. Notice that it's in the East US Azure region. If you want to avoid uh, extra cost for data movement, you could put your resources over there in uh, uh, East US. Uh, and then go ahead and click add data set and you'll be ready to go. Once you've done that, you can go to develop and create a new notebook. In my case, I've already got a notebook ready to go. Uh, this is going to be a PySpark notebook. Uh, let's get this develop pane out of the way. Notice that the language says Python here. We also need to attach to a serverless Apache Spark pool. I'm going to use demo three. This is a, a really small pool that I have not uh, started yet. And so you'll get to see the timing to start this thing up. On that note, let's go ahead and click play on the first cell. That'll get that those resources allocated for us as I talk you through a little bit of code. So not a lot happening in the first cell, but it's, it's important stuff. We are going to import a few libraries, a few PySpark libraries that we'll need, set up some source paths. Line four here, you will keep the same if you're using the same linked data set. These others you don't need to change. The demo data kickstart ADLS is my own uh, linked Azure Data Lake storage. So go find your container and storage account that you've linked, uh, but feel free to use leave the rest of it the same once you get that switched out. Probably the most important piece of this is the taxi zone schema. And so this is an example of what a Spark schema looks like. There's several ways to do this, especially within PySpark. Um, this way is pretty straightforward though, is you create a struct type and then you just add fields to it. And so each line there that's an add will say, add a field name such as location ID of data type integer or string. And that all gets translated to Spark data type so that as it loads up this data frame object, it knows what to do with the data. With that, let's skip forward and move on to the next step. Okay, so skipping forward, it took just under three minutes to get those resources started. Really all that time was spent allocating resources for my pool. Um, so three minutes really isn't too bad to spin up on the fly. And that'll basically stay, those resources will stay available until whatever your timeout is. So mine's set to 15 minutes. So if I stop using them for 15 minutes without running a command, those will turn back off and I'll, you know, I'll stop paying for them at that time. Now, moving on to the next piece of this code. In cell two, what we're going to do is a, a fairly straightforward Spark read and write. So we are going to use the Spark session, which is always available in my notebook as Spark. We'll call the read method and then specify that there is a header available within the file that we have a schema already defined. So we're passing in that schema I showed you a moment ago. And then we're telling it that this is a CSV file, comma separated value file, and giving it the path to that file. This data isn't actually in that link data set I showed you, uh, at least I don't believe it is. I got this um, from uh, Azure Databricks sample data, I believe, and have saved it in my own data lake storage account. You could always skip the join step though, if you're following along, you don't have access to this data. Let's go ahead and run this command though, which will then write the data down as a Delta format. Uh, it'll override anything that's already there and it'll save it to the path that we defined earlier. Okay, so that's step completed in 38 seconds, not too shabby for a simple read and write. Um, now we'll get to the bigger section. And so I'm going to show you two different ways we could transform this data. We're reading now from the main uh, trip data. So this is like the transaction data of taxi trips for all of 2018. And we'll again call spark.read. In this case, instead of a comma separated value file, we have a parquet file uh, at that path that I showed you earlier for the linked data set. The first option we have of how we could transform this is uh, using this with column. So with column is a 
method that will operate on one column at a time, and you can either override the column or output a new column. So on line seven there, we are doing a with column that will output a new column called year month. We are using a few SQL functions, a regex replace and a substring to take a string formatted date time, grab the year and the month and do year underscore month. And we'll use that field for partitioning later to just improve our read performance. Next, we'll look at a uh, pickup date and drop off date and we'll do a two date uh, tran transformation there. And finally, we will calculate a tip percentage just by dividing the tip amount by total amount just at a record by record um, level here. Notice the COL here is a, a function that says I'm referencing a column that already exists within the data frame. So in this case, input DF stands for input data frame. Data frame is a, a class within Spark that we use for working with data. It's, think of it as like a table, like an in-memory table really. Now option B, the downside of this is, I like the way this reads, I think it's pretty clean. The downside is it'll project each of these uh, with columns separately and it gets a little bit messy in the explain plan. It can uh, slow things down a bit. So a way that's probably gonna run faster in most cases with this size data even, is to do select expression. This is like taking each item you pass in here is like a, a line in a SQL select statement. And so first I say select star, no big deal there but it'll get, make sure I have all the columns available. And then we can go in and we're doing the same exact thing, just slightly different syntax because of this expression uh, way, of, way of defining it. So I'm calling a replace, uh, I'm calling the replace method on my pickup date time, getting only the left fields in order to basically get a year month out of that like I described. Doing a couple of date conversions, the F in front of the uh, quotation marks is telling us that we are doing some string replacement. We're passing in that date format field. And then uh, finally, we're calculating a tip percentage there. Uh, once uh, with that transform data frame, I want to join it to my lookup data I showed you earlier. And so we're going to define zone data frame as um, reading in the data that we saved for the taxi zones. So we'll pull that stuff into a data frame. And then here on line 25 to 30, you can see we are doing a join on line 26 there, we're joining transform data frame to zone data frame on pickup location ID equals zone location ID, and we'll be doing a left join. Then we drop the location ID because that's excessive, we already have it. Uh, and then we can rename our, our fields to be more explicit about what they're defining. Then finally, the last step is to do a write. Again, we'll do overwrite just to make the demo simple. I don't um, end up uh, duplicating my data every time I run it. We'll partition by year month, which will give us access to filter on the year month when we're doing a read and really just cut down how much data we have to read in if we're targeting a single year month at a time. Save this as Delta, which is an optimized format for dealing with big data, especially within the Apache Spark ecosystem. And then we'll have to give it a path to save that too. Go ahead and run this and we'll, uh, as it runs, we'll take a look at some monitoring capabilities we have. As that's running, we can uh, look at the job execution uh, drop down to see how it's progressing. And so it starts off with about 240 tasks. These are like independent units of, of work that happen within Spark. And then it's broken into much larger stages. And we can see most of it's done. It's working on this save command, uh, which has nine different tasks to it. And so um, if we want to see a little more detail, we can continue to click in here, or we can click on view in monitoring which will take us to the Synapse Analytics monitoring for uh, Apache Spark. And so we have logs and the ability to search those. Sorry, my uh, screen zoomed in quite a bit here. Um, but also we have this graphic view up here that shows me the different stages and will show some of the sequence things run in and I can click on details and uh, have a few capabilities here that are worth exploring on your own. Let's go back and check on our job. All right, my job's completed. It took just over five minutes to load that year's worth of data. I haven't really tuned this. It's a pretty small cluster, so you might be able to speed that up a bit if you cared to. Okay, now we can do a quick test read just to show that that data was written. Um, we'll be reading from the same path we wrote to and getting a few columns and showing the first 20 lines. So here's the results, 12 seconds, and we have a, a sample of data to make sure everything looks you know, reasonably well at the end of our demo. Well, that's a wrap on the demo. If you want to check out this demo in you know, Scholar or C Sharp, I have those available for you on my channel. Otherwise, reach out if you have any questions or comments for me. See you next time.